Hey everyone, Graham here from TheRecordingRevolution.com and I've got another product review for you today. We're looking at the Waves Red Console from Abbey Road Studios. It's a very interesting plugin and I've been playing with it the last few months and uh, mixed a, a bunch of stuff with it and tried it out in a bunch of different ways. And uh, now that we're done with five minutes to a better mix, um, I figured I could show some of these things I've been using, and this one in particular I was excited to show you because it's interesting. It's very interesting. So the question is, this is a console, right? It's emulating a vintage console. The, the red consoles, there's a little bit of a write-up here over at Wave's website. So check that out for more info and some great pictures of Lenny Kravitz with his Red 37 um, and all the guys in lab coats actually building these things, okay? That's super cool for one. Uh, I like the history that, you know, RED, it stands for the Record Engineering Development Department. There was literally literally a team of people that were hired or at least commissioned at Abbey Road Studios at EMI Recording at the time to build custom consoles for their needs. And so they designed the RED 17, and then they designed the 37 and the 51. They kept adding features and enhancing the circuitry. And just let's pause for a moment to say it's pretty darn cool because although I am an audio engineer by trade and record and mix for a living, I don't know how to build anything. And I know that makes some people discredit me, but thank the Lord for computers because recording and mixing uh, in the box is a dream, and I'm glad I don't have to build stuff. Anyway, just wanted to say that. That's pretty darn cool. So this guy is supposed to emulate those three um, red consoles that the Beatles recorded through and Pink Floyd recorded through. I mean, these have a lot of rich history, okay? And it's also a great way to sell a plugin. <laughs> but is this like the virtual console collection from, say, Slate Digital? Or is it even like the Waves nonlinear plugin, which is their console emulator? meaning do you put this on every single track and mix through it and it kind of has that subtle summing uh, feature set to you. Uh, I would say my experience, no, that's not really what they're going for. You could, I mean, you could put this on every single track, but two things. One, your computer might fall over because this thing is a beast, okay? Uh, on my computer, which is a pretty fast i7 processor with plenty of RAM, uh, just five of these guys with the rest of my other plugins makes everything fall over. It's crazy. So um, that would be pretty intense. But also, it's such um, less of a subtle effect than, say, the Virtual Console Collection. It's very noticeable, and it's very distinct, so it may not be what you want on every track, okay? So that aside, here's how I've been using it on a lot of mixes lately. I will throw a stereo version of the 37 or the 51, which is this one plug in here that you can switch up here. I've been throwing a stereo copy of that on my aux tracks, so like my drum bus, my guitar bus, and my vocals, and sometimes my mix bus, okay? And so I've pulled up a session here that I was working on lately, and I've used this plugin kind of all over the place, and I wanted to show you kind of what it does. Real quickly, and I'm not going to go over everything because you can figure it out on your own. It's pretty simple. You're going to pull up the main plugin, which is the 3751, and you choose between the two and they sound slightly different. I would say the 51 has a little bit more top end, and the 37 sounds a little more muffled, which is kind of cool. So take your pick. There's even a channel setting. These are very, very subtle, but you could flip through these and see if one does something sweeter to the audio or not. There's a bass lift, which I'm going to skip because I never use it, but it could be just what you need. And mostly under here, there's a two-tone, uh, two-knob EQ, all right? Tone high, tone low. You can choose between pop or classic, and pop is more of a notch boost or cut, and classic is a shelf. And I've stuck with classic or switched it to classic on just about every time I've used this because I think it's real um, gentle and it's a very musical EQ. So literally, you can just dial in a bit of top end or bottom end, more or less. You can choose the console that suits the the material. There's a drive knob, which literally you can overload the console, which is super cool. So if you really want a gritty, like you're really hitting something analog, it's it's super cool how it distorts. It sounds very, very real. Um, but again, that's are you going to use that on every track? No, but it's there. And then a couple different settings, stereo, duo, which is like a multi-mono, 
MS even, which I haven't even messed with, and your final output knob. At its core, I'm literally throwing these on a, a bus or an aux, doing a slight bit of EQ if the whole group needs it. I won't use an EQ plug, and I'll just use this for a little top end or scoop out a little bottom end. And then I'll drive it a bit and then just let it simmer, let it do its thing. So I'm not actually touching it much. But here's a song where I've got it on the mix bus and my other buses, and I'm going to take let you hear a little bit of what's going on, and I'm going to cut things in and out. So here's the mix for now. And here is the red console on my mix bus. And I'm going to play it for you, and then I'm going to cut it out. So it's it's pretty subtle. I mean, with a whole mix going on, everything running through this, it's kind of hard to tell maybe exactly what it's doing. And I, I like that. I've purposely not gone crazy with it. I think it adds a little bit of color, a little bit of focus. I really enjoy it on the mix bus. Let's listen to something a little more easier to determine. So here is uh, guitars on this song. And here is the same console. Now, I've see, I think on the... the the mix bus, I have it on the 51 because it's a little more open, a little more top end. On the guitars, I've got it on the 37, which is super cool because it kind of kills a little bit of the top end and it sounds a little more focused. And And this is kind of a cool vintage vibe anyway of a song, but I like this. So here's the guitars running through it and then I'll take it away. See how it kind of brings things out a little bit. Um, I've what I've done is I've I turned down uh, the output knob and I boosted the gain on this console. So I tried to get some gain through this plugin. I level matched it, but I just was experimenting to see if gain through the plugin versus where it was outside of the plugin did anything, you know, musically to it. I I can't really tell, but I have used a little bit of a shelf um, to boost some top end, maybe you know little under 2 dB. And then I scooped out a little bit of the low and I rolled off almost a dB of, of the low end. I don't even, I couldn't even tell you where on the EQ curve these knobs are set, but the manual will tell you, so go read that. I dialed up the drive a little bit, pushed it up from where it sits on the default setting. And then I put it on duo mode, which I've really been enjoying on stereo groups because it allows the left and the right to trigger it differently. And that kind of makes things sound a little wider. So, you know, one guitar in the right panned right might trigger the right differently, it might be hotter than something on the left. So that way it won't affect the left as much and it gives some, some stereo width to it. So here it again, with and without. Here's without and then we'll kick it on. I think it just adds some life to the to the track. I really like it on guitars. Um, let's see. Let's hear it on drums. See if it's doing anything on drums. Hear the drums uh, without it.
So I've done two things. I'm obviously boosting the top and low end, but here's what's so cool about this plugin. It makes me work a little bit differently. Like I wouldn't throw on an EQ on the drum bus and just boost the top end and boost the low end. Um, but with this plugin, I throw it on first before I do any EQ, and I pick uh, an amp module and find what makes it sound slightly cool. And I know I wanted to open up a bit, so I just kind of push the EQs a little bit, like almost like three, two and a half, almost three dB on the top end, about two dB on the bottom end. And it's so musical that it doesn't like just boost the volume like crazy. And it do, it just sounds natural. I can't really describe it. So there's something really satisfying about grabbing these knobs, especially in the shelf classic mode, and just giving yourself a little bit more top and bottom end on something that maybe is a little just muffled or in the middle. I can't scoop out any mid-range, so this is kind of the same way as getting that effect. You could boost the top, the bottom, and pull down the output as needed. But it does something really focused in it glues things, and I, there's no good words for audio. All the audio words are horrible, like warm and glue and fat. But there's something really cool about it. You kind of have to play with it to experience it. And it's subtle. It doesn't sculpt the sound of my drums. If I really have an issue in the mid-range, I'm going to go to an EQ and pull it out. Like here, I've pulled out you know, 550 hertz. And it doesn't compress it like you would think a compressor, but it does squeeze it a little bit. And it's really nice on drums. Um, I also used it on the percussion tracks here because there's a bunch of percussion, like six tracks of percussion. Um, let me get my group and then bring these on. Um, let's see, where's that? Here we go. Here is without the red console on the percussion. Notice a big boost here in the top and it's gonna get bright. done some gain or some drive boost here. It just brightens things up in a real musical, natural way. You could have done this with any shelf on an EQ, but there's something cool about this. And then again, mixing all the tracks through these group tracks, they all add up. I've got it on guitars, got it on vocals. So what I'm going to do is just play the mix one more time, and then I'm going to take out the red consoles. I've got it on the bass. I've got three bass tracks routing through here. So here's the 17, um, and I'm using the 37, 37, 37, 37s on everything else, and then the 51 on the group, uh, excuse me, the mix bus. So here's the whole mix together, and I'm just going to go ahead and one by one bypass um, the, uh, the red consoles, and then you can see sort of the difference. <laughs> So again, it's it's a cumulative thing. It's relatively subtle. What I will say is that I love that this uh, this console plugin is musical, and it's different than the virtual console collection in that I, you use it kind of like a channel strip. You can adjust the EQ, you can adjust the drive a little bit, but it just it does things in a musical way, which is great. So you almost can't really abuse it because it it sounds relatively pleasing. Um, all the way through. Okay, let's get down to the nitty gritty. How would most people use this? And is it useful in, let's say, a home or project studio uh, in their arsenal when there's other plugins that do different things? Is this needed? Is it useful? And is it worth the price? Um, so let's just talk about it purely as a plugin. I would say you definitely don't need it to make a great mix. Um, it's to me, it's like a candy plugin. Like it's super fun to have. I've actually really enjoyed it primarily in mastering, believe it or not. 
I master a bunch of stuff through this as of late. And what I do is I throw it on um, before I do any EQ um, or, or limiting or compressing, and I just use it for color. I literally run a mix through it for color. And if I need to, I can EQ with it, but it does something great to a final mix. So this is a super cool mastering tool also. Um, keep that in mind. I've really enjoyed it in that regard. In the mix, it's super cool if you can put it on your drums, your guitars, your vocals, and your bass and things like that um, on the auxiliary track level, the group track level, and see if it doesn't just add an extra bit of saturation and harmonics and character instead of, say, maybe a tape saturation plugin on your, your drum group. Um, it could take that place or it could be something you could use with it. See if it just is a character piece, okay? It's not going to replace a good EQ and a good compressor and good technique, cleaning up your tracks, balancing frequencies. It doesn't do any of that for you, really. It's just a color piece, okay? So I would say there's a lot of people who watch this channel, read this blog, who are newer to mixing. And I would say, even if you have the money, don't buy this plugin right now. You need to focus on listening and EQing and compressing and level gain matching staging core mixing stuff first. I think you'll see a lot more mileage out of using your stock plugins for one or if you needed a different type of compressor or EQ or if you would like a channel strip plugin. I've looked at you know, even the Waves SSL or something, um, even if you can't afford that. A channel strip might be helpful to you if your DAW doesn't have one. But really, you need to get better mixes with EQ and compression first. If you've been doing this for a while and you're enjoying your mixes and you're just wondering if they could have a different color or if you mix in the box and you're wondering what all the fuss is about with all these plugins, um, if you haven't already gotten something like the Virtual Console Collection, Maybe spring for that, because that really is sort of a across the board enhance your whole mix because the way tracks play together. If you already have that, I would say the red is a super cool uh, thing to bring in the, the mix because it's a character piece and your ears will probably be trained to hear what it's doing and you'll know why you'd want to use it. You know, five years ago, would I want to use this? Yeah, because it looks super cool. Um, but would it help me? Probably not, because I'm still working on EQing and compressing and getting things sounding good with core technique. Now, price. I think this thing lists for in the $300 range, maybe $349. That's a lot of money for one plug-in, uh, especially since it's just sort of like a character piece. But Waves had a great deal. Uh, they dropped this price down to $149. A few months ago, I jumped on it then because it's just such a great price. It's like 60, 70 percent off. Um, if you can spring for it at full price, and like I said, you're that in that category of looking for some color in your mixes, it is really worth it. It's a great plugin. But for the the project home studio guy, if you can't spring for it right now, maybe see if it gets on sale one day, or see if you know they run a special at the end of the year like they do sometimes. Keep it on your list as something to grab or save up for when you've got the money. Do a mix for a client, make a little bit of money, and then invest it back in your studio and pick up something like this. It's not a make or break plug-in for me, but I like what they're doing. It's super fun. I'm using it all over the place and just experimenting with adding vibe, adding, adding character, adding color to things that maybe sound technically good, but I want them to just pop a little bit more in a different way. Hope that helps. That's the Waves Red console, the Abbey Road Studios console from Waves. Hope you all have a great day. Make some great music, and I will talk to you soon.